Today I'm going to show you how to do all the calculations that you need to mock up the two main components of this lock and that is the key and the bolt that the key moves to be able to open the lock. Once you've established the relationship between those two pieces, everything else that goes inside of the lock either interacts with one or the other. The key and the bolt are the only two things that actually have to work together as a unit. But the first thing I need to do is repair a mistake from the last video. This shiny spot on the plate is where the original keyhole pivot was. I have no idea why I drilled it there, but it doesn't belong there. It actually belongs a little bit lower, as you can see here. So I'm just going to plug that hole with a rivet. Uh, the only area that it may be visible is on the back of the lock, and there's going to be all kinds of rivets and stuff happening back there. So one little scar, more or less, isn't going to make any difference. It's certainly a lot less work than rebuilding two new plates. I've prepped the plate here by drilling in two counter bores on either side of the plate. They're very shallow obviously because I don't want to drill right through and create a new sized hole. I just want somewhere for the rivet head to go and I'm using a really short rivet. There's no strain on this at all. I just want to be able to fill that counter bore and make sure that the rivet doesn't pop out at some point. This kind of thing was quite common on really old locks. I have a lock from the 1700s and they underestimated the size of the block that they needed to start with to hammer out the plate that they needed to make the lock. So they just forge welded another plate on the corner to make it the right size. It's kind of a nice reminder of how much work was involved with just getting the raw materials that you needed to make something back then. I'm not sure when sheet metal production actually began as a manufactured product, but if it was available back then, it would have been very expensive. And if you had a shop with a few apprentices kicking around, well, it was certainly much easier to get them to hammer out the stock that you needed. And if they miscalculated, you know, the size of the block that they needed to start with, well, then they just welded on another little corner. They didn't just scrap that and start over. So here's the rivet completed and later on when I sand these plates smooth, uh, that rivet head is going to disappear and blend in with everything else. The first thing I want to figure out is how large to make the key and specifically I'm talking about how much of an arc the key is going to scribe from the center point to the outside of the bit of the key. And to figure that out, I'm just going to use a compass and just set it to different measurements until I get something that I think is going to work. So initially it's just trial and error. You're taking a measurement and you're trying to visualize where it's going to move inside the lock. And then you're going to try to picture if you're going to have enough room to place the other pieces around that arc. So for example, you can see here, if I place the compass point on the drill hole that I had originally, there's virtually no room above the key when it's at top dead center to place any of the mechanism. I don't want to make the key any smaller because I think that's going to be right at the limits of my eyesight and my patience. So I've decided to move it down a little bit. And you can see that just moving it a little bit really gives you a lot of room up top. I know this might be a little confusing for people that aren't familiar with how these locks are made, but it'll all come together in a moment. This is still where you start. The black square on the plate is just a piece of electrical tape that I've placed there so the pivot point of the compass has something to bite into and not skip around. Here I'm just marking the location of that pivot point on the tape. So at this point I'm happy with that measurement. It gives me lots of room to put the mechanism above the key and I've taken the compass and drawn a full circle inside the lock plate and it's not hitting on anything and I have enough room if I need to make the key just a little bit larger or a little bit smaller. I'm going to be able to make those adjustments without affecting anything. So here I'm transferring the measurement from the inside back plate where I took the measurements to the outside of the front of the lock, which is where I'm going to be doing the drilling. And I'm using the point of the heart shape as a reference point to make that measurement. Next I'm going to clamp the two plates together as I did before and drill through both of them together so that the pivot point for this key is in exactly the same spot on both locks. 
the next thing I need to do is establish where the center line of the lock is. And for that, I'm just making a mark in the center of the heart detail and then running a line through the center point of the drill hole. And hopefully that'll line up pretty close to the bottom point of the lock plate. Next I'm going to lay out a line that's going to determine where the top edge of the bolt is going to be located. That line has to be 90 degrees to that center line and it also describes the path that the bolt is going to take as it's unlocking and locking the shackle. The only thing that needs to be installed above this line is a very small flat spring so I'm just estimating how much room I'm going to need for that and I'm going to lay the line out accordingly. I don't want to drop this line too low because this is the top edge of the bolt. The free end of the shackle has to drop down below this line in order to get locked in place. None of these lines are carved in stone. This is just a test mock-up to see whether I'm in the ballpark. Again, I'm not using a set of drawings here. This is how a smith would have mocked it up on his anvil. He would have taken one piece, fit the next piece to it, and just kind of work through the process. So now that I have all the head scratching worked out, I'm ready to actually commit the design to some metal. I'm using a piece of sheet metal and I've cut a notch on the end so it represents the size of the key that I want to use. And I'll be using that to measure everything else from now on. The advantage of doing this over using compasses is that I can have several reference marks on this one plate that I can use at any time. It's always there for me to use as a reference. And in addition to that, because I filed the pivot point on this plate to fit the hole exactly, I'm not getting any error that I might get by placing a, the uh, pivot point of a compass through the uh, center hole. And here I'm using the reference lines that I've drawn on the plate to establish the overall size of the bolt. Here I have the bolt in position on the back plate and I'm ready to figure out the other pieces that need to be cut away from this bolt to make it work. The only thing I have so far is the thin leg on the top of the screen that's going through the guide on the left hand side of the lock. And you can see that as a series of hash marks on the back plate. The bottom edge of that bolt is shaped like a gear tooth and the key spins around and locks into that tooth and either moves the bolt to the right to unlock the lock or to the left to lock the lock. So here the bolt is in a locked position and the line that I've scribed is the path that the key has to take to get to the center of the bolt before it can start pushing on the other side of the tooth to start moving the bolt to the right to unlock the lock. The other side of the bolt is figured out exactly the same way, only this time the bolt is placed in an unlocked position and I'm scribing the line from where the key enters the bolt from the right and moves towards top dead center. Again, this is a mock-up, so it's not the exact shape, but it certainly is close enough to start making the final pieces, and it will allow you the room to make the final adjustments that you need without removing a lot of material. And then once I know the location of the tooth on the bolt, I can just sketch in approximately where the rear guide of the bolt is going to be located. 
simple test to see whether the mechanism is working is to use the key mock-up to slide the bolt along a straight edge to see if it binds anywhere. And here's how the whole thing looks in cartoon form. <laughs>